Hello friends, welcome back to India for AS. This is Manjunath Mudol. Topic of this video is ISRO's second rocket launch port. This topic can be studied under GS3 paper Science and Technology topic Space Technology subtopic. In this video, we are going to study about what is ISRO's second launch, rocket launch port, why it is in use, why does India need a new rocket launch port, why Tamil Nadu is chosen for ISRO's second launch port, why launching sites are generally located on the eastern coast of the continents, what are small satellite launch vehicles and why they are used for, how has India's SSLV journey has been so far, what are the features of Satish Dhawan Space Center, formerly known as SHAR, and a prelims practice question based on the above topics. Prime Minister Narendra Modi initiated the construction of ISRO's second rocket launch port on February 28, 2024. The launch port is located in Kulasekara Pattinam in Tamil Nadu's Tutukodi district. It is chosen for its advantageous coastal position. The facility's construction is estimated to be around 986 crore rupees. Its primary purpose will be for commercial, on-demand and small satellite launches. The launch port will serve as an exclusive facility for these types of launches in the future. Once operational, the new facility could accommodate anywhere between 20 to 30 small satellite launch vehicles launches annually. Now the question arises, why does India need a new launch port? In addition to the existing launch port at Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Hari Kota. Following are the reasons for the need of new launch port in India. The first one being increasing commercial launches. With the recent government policy of opening up the space sector to private players, India anticipates a significant rise in commercial space launches. So in order to cater to this rise in commercial space launches, India needs a dedicated launch port. The second reason being to relieve the pressure on existing facility that is Satish Javan Space Center, which is located in Sri Hari Kota in Andhra Pradesh. So this is to prevent the overburdening of the ISRO's first launch port, this is Satish Dhawan Space Center. The third reason being to cater to the diverse launch capabilities, that is the Kula Sekara Pattinam launch port, that is ISRO's second launch port, will handle smaller payloads and it is released the Satish Dhawan Space Center, which focuses on bigger and heavy liftoff missions, including India's ambitious lunar, Venus and human flight missions. The fourth reason is to facilitating the private players. The new launch port, which is going to be located in Kulasekara Pattinam, will offer opportunities for private companies to develop space qualified subsystems, build satellites, and launch vehicles. Thereby, it is going to encourage private sector participation in Indian space industry. The fifth reason being dedicated infrastructure. The new space launch port will provide dedicated launch infrastructure, especially for on-demand commercial launches, and it ensures smoother operations for missions, especially for those of commercial in nature. Now question arises, why Tamil Nadu has been chosen for the ISRO's second launch port facility? So the reasons are as follows. First one is geographical advantage. Kulasekara Pattinam launch port offers a natural advantage due to its geographical location in coastal Tamil Nadu. The second reason being it provides optimized trajectory for small satellite launch vehicle. The launch port allows for a direct southward trajectory, particularly advantages for small satellite launch vehicle missions. The third reason is 
reduced fuel consumption. Unlike launches from the existing Satish Dhawan Space Center facility, which requires skirting eastwards around Sri Lanka. Kula Sekara Pertinam's location, on the other hand, to the west of Colombo, enables a straight southward flight, saving fuel for SSLV missions. So here we have Sri Hari Kota, that is Satish Dhawan Space Center, that is ISRO's first launch port. So any satellite that is going to be launched from this facility, it has to perform a dog leg maneuver. See here we can see the trajectory. This uh, change in the trajectory it is called as dog leg maneuver. It is done to avoid flying over Sri Lanka. So the rocket should not fly over Sri Lanka in order to protect Sri Lanka from the rocket debris. The reason being Sri Lanka should be protected from the rocket debris. On the other hand, the Kula Sekira Pattinam launch port is located in this part of India. So any rocket that is SSLV that are being launched from this facility, they does not require this kind of dog wear maneuvering, dog leg maneuvering. This kind of dog leg maneuver requires more fuel in the rocket which eats into the payload capacity of the launcher. As the fuel weight in the rocket increases, the payload weight decreases proportionately. The fourth reason being equatorial proximity. The Kulasaikara Pattinam launch port that is located near to the equator. This significantly boosts the payload capacity for satellite due to Earth's rotational velocity. If a spacecraft is launched from a site near Earth's equator, it can take optimum advantage of the Earth's substantial rotational speed. So, in order to harness this Earth's rotational speed, the rockets or the launch ports are being located proximity to the equator. Now, one more question arises. Why launching sites are generally located on the eastern coast of continents? The reasons are as follows. The first one is utilizing Earth's rotation. Launching towards east takes the advantage of Earth's rotation, which moves from west to east. As we all know that Earth rotates from west to east. So launching from the eastern side of the continent takes this as an advantage. This natural motion of the Earth provides an additional boost to the rocket's velocity. This is called as earth rotational velocity. By harnessing this rotational velocity of the earth, rockets require less energy to reach the orbit, making launches more efficient, cost effective and this also saves the fuel. So these are the reasons to prefer the eastern coast of the continents to launch the satellites. Example being Kula Sekara Pattinam, which is located in eastern coast in Tamil Nadu. Eastern coast in Tamil Nadu. Now we will dive into one more topic that is what are small satellite launch vehicles? What are they used for? Small satellite launch vehicles are developed by ISRO. They are designed for specifically for launching small satellites. These small satellite launch vehicle typically have three stages and a lift where lift off weight of about 120 tons. They are 34 meter in length and 2 meters in diameter. The small satellite launch vehicles are equipped with a combination of solid and liquid propulsion systems with a liquid propulsion stage serving as the terminal stage. Coming to the mission objectives of small satellite launch vehicle, they are aimed at launching small sized satellites weighing between 10 to 500 kg into low earth orbit. These kinds of small satellites are also referred to as mini, micro or nano satellites because of their smaller in size and weight compared to the traditional satellites. Coming to the advantages of SSLVs, 
they are cost effective and can efficiently insert satellites into their intended orbits with a shorter flight times compared to the larger launch vehicles. Further, SSLVs are well suited for commercial and on-demand launches due to their flexibility and cost effectiveness. The SSLVs are also used for satellite projects initiated by college students and private companies in the space sector. Small satellite launch vehicles offer accessibility to smaller organizations and educational institutions which are interested in launching satellites, allowing them to participate in space exploration and research. These SSLV missions support innovation and experimentation by providing a platform for diverse satellite projects, including those developed by non-traditional players in the space industry, that is, college students and private players. Now we will briefly study about the India's SSLV journey so far. SSLV represents a recent advancement in ISRO's launch capabilities. They are aimed at facilitating the launching of small satellites. The first SSLV mission, SSLV B1, conducted in August 2022, ended in failure. Although the launch itself was successful, the insertion of satellites into the orbit did not occur as planned. ISRO achieved success with its second SSLV mission, SSLV D2, in February 2023. Three satellites were successfully inserted into the intended 450 km circular orbit after a 15 minute flight. So, ISRO used Satish Dhawan Space Center to launch all these SSLV missions so far. Now we will briefly study about the features of ISRO's first launch port that is Satish Dhawan Space Center. Satish Dhawan Space Center situated along the east coast of Andhra Pradesh. This is located 80 km off Chennai providing a convenient access to both land and sea transport routes. This space center offers comprehensive launch infrastructure for all ISRO missions including solid propellant processing setups, static testing facilities, launch vehicle integration facilities, telemetry services, and a missile control center. This facility comprises two launch complexes, namely the first launch pad and second launch pad. The first launch pad was constructed in the early 1990s and it saw its maiden launch in September 1993. The second launch pad was operational since 2005. The second launch pad witnessed its first launch in May 2005. The Satish Dhawan Space Center routinely supports the launch of various ISRO vehicles, including Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, Geosynchronous Space Launch Vehicle, Geosynchronous Satellites Launch Vehicle Mark III. This is all about ISRO's second launch port facility at Kulasekara Pattinam in Tamil Nadu and a brief study about the features of SSLV and also about Satish Javan Space Center. Here we have provided one prelims practice question based on the topic that we have discussed so far. Go through the question and comment your answer. The answer and detailed explanation for this question is available in the PDF handout. The PDF handout also contains the detailed notes on this video topic. The PDF handout is available in our Telegram channel. The link to Telegram channel is provided in the description box. You can join the Telegram channel and download the PDF handout. This topic is very important for UPSC prelims 2024. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Till then, happy learning.